Hi everyone, happy Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We're in this Easter season, in this octave of Easter. So eight days of celebrating Easter, like every day is Easter, it's all Easter. And then even extending that, 50 full days of celebrating the Easter season. What we're proclaiming is Alleluia, which means praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Hopefully we've got some middle schoolers out there who are tuning in. Thank you for engaging your faith while you're at home. Let's begin with a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh Jesus, thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for dying for us, conquering our death, conquering our sin, forgiving us, wiping us clean, washing us, lifting us up, and bringing us into yourself. We ask you to bring us to the Father, your Father and our Father. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what we're going to talk about today uh, is what's that Easter season all about? Well, Jesus is risen. That's what our faith is rested in. So this past weekend on Sunday on Easter, we read from the Gospel of Matthew. So I'll ask you to pause the video while you go grab your Bibles and read Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 through 10. So Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 through 10. Go grab your Bible, read that, pause the video here. Sweet. Got your Bibles, got it read. Hopefully found some good things in there, something stood out. I'm going to focus you guys on a few verses. So verse 4, it says, the guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. So we've got guards, these Romans, these guys who are not pointed towards God. Their heart is not directed towards God. They're actually walking the other way. So if you're not walking towards God, you're walking away from him. Even if you're standing still, you're walking the other way. So these guys have their hearts pointed away from God. What, what about Mary Magdalene? She's got her heart pointed towards God. She's running to seek Jesus. So after the angel came to him, it says, they were fearful yet overjoyed and ran to announce this to his disciples. Behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. So these women, Mary Magdalene and the others, they have their hearts pointed towards the Lord. So they, they're fearful because something crazy and outstanding is happening, but they're overjoyed. They're filled with joy, and that joy comes from their faith. So let's kind of compare and contrast those two different groups. We've got the guards whose hearts are pointed away from the Lord. And we've got Mary Magdalene and the other women whose hearts are pointed towards the Lord. So the women are going towards Jesus, going towards God, and the guards are going away from God. But what's the difference between them? Well, the guards, when God appears, when the angel appears, when something of God appears, the guards, and their hearts are pointed away from the Lord, their hearts are stricken with fear. So much fear that they became like dead men. And the women, when the angel appeared and told them good news, yeah, sure, they were they were scared, taken aback, but it wasn't fear for their life. It was fear of the unknown, wonder and awe at what was going on. It was a fear of, I'm not in control, but they were overjoyed. Why? Because God was working, and they knew God was working because they were on the path towards him. Well, let's try to apply this to, their, to our lives. If we're on the path walking towards God, which means God is the main priority in our heart, and we want to please him, and we want to follow him, and live our life ordered towards God. That means when something happens, something from God appears, sure, we might be fearful, but we'll be overjoyed. Why? Because we know God is working. But if we're like the guards and our heart's not pointed towards God. If God is not the first place of our heart, if he's not king of our heart, that means we're walking away from God. We're walking towards something else, whatever that thing is. It could be fame. It could be you know, being popular or having money or wealth or having all these possessions, or my own identity based upon the things that I do. If we're walking towards something else, we're not walking towards God, which means if God appears, it's going to cause us fear, and we're going to become like dead men, like those guards, which means there won't be any joy. It'll actually be quite painful. Practical example. Say I'm a guy who likes playing video games. I played video games a lot when I was younger. Uh, I started on the Nintendo 64, played a lot of PlayStation 2, Played a little bit of Wii, had got a PlayStation 3, playing all sorts of games. But you know what? There came a point in my life where God had asked me 
through somebody else to not play so many video games. Well, at that point, it, it hurt. It's like, wait, <laughs> but I like doing that. That's fun. I mean, you get lost in a fantasy world, and I enjoy myself, and I'm being entertained, and sometimes I'm doing it with friends, so it's a community thing, and it's good. Video games can be good. They can do all those things, but my heart was pointed towards the Lord, so I was following him, and he had said, hey, I'm going to take this away. I don't need to have it. Whoa, God's moving. I'm fearful, but I trust him. I know that he's working. And so, for example, maybe some of you guys or some of your friends or your brothers or somebody you know has played The Legend of Zelda, uh, The Breath of the Wild, one of my favorite games, huge Legend of Zelda fan. That came out when I was probably 20, 21 or something. As I, I was in the seminary, I'm pursuing the Lord. I played that game 24 hours within the span of five days. Some of you might be like, Psh, I play way more video games than that. I hope not. But that was a lot, a lot of time spent on one video game. I didn't even get close to beating it. I was only like a quarter of the way done with the game. But after that five days, I'm like, oh man, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I had to sell the game. I had to go give it back. I had just had it for five days. I didn't even beat it. And I had to give it away. Why? Because even though there was pain there, something weird and strange was happening. I was fearful, but I was aimed towards the Lord and the Lord was moving, which means, you know what? Afterwards, I was free. I wasn't bound by playing that game and having to beat it and experience No. I was free to do what the Lord wanted me to do, to spend more time in prayer, spend more time with my family, uh, to read a good book that I had been wanting to read for a while. He had been directing me this way. But imagine if I was pointed away from the Lord. I didn't care what the Lord said. And then somebody took that game away from me or somebody had asked me to stop playing the game. No, I would be, I would be fearful. I would cling to it. I wouldn't want to let it go. I would become like a dead man, wrapped in on myself, clinging to this thing that I think is going to make me happy, like these guards full of fear. And if somebody ripped it away, I would become angry and hateful and spiteful. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be free. I would be bound by hate and fear and clinging to this thing that's not actually going to bring me freedom and joy. So during this Easter season, is your heart pointed towards the Lord? Are you willing to let go of the things that he wants to take and receive the great gifts that he wants to give you because his gifts are amazing or they like the guards are you scared uh, of him entirely because you don't want him to take anything away because your heart's not pointed towards him and you're clinging to something else so over these 50 days in easter how about we reflect on that what am i clinging to where's my heart pointed towards like what's the main priority what is king in my heart Imagine your heart has a throne on it and what sits on that throne and directs your life. But remember, Jesus has risen, which means he can bring us freedom from anything. He can save us from anything and he can heal us from anything. He is God. So, alleluia. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen. Happy Easter.